A warm welcome to the Renewal Nuggets and bringing this conversation about how to befriend, how to connect with our emotions in ways that are helpful by using the wisdom of science and psychology, but also combine that with the wisdom of ancient Christian faith and also non-denominational spiritual care. And there's some inner laws about how emotional intelligence really work, which I want to bring and share with you with years and years of experience in terms of guiding others and also helping myself in the process. And there's this idea for many givers, and I would say, especially for Christian givers, although I'm not limiting to that, any kind human being, we've been conditioned that we want to be kind, we want to give, and we don't want to be prideful. And at the same time, with the advent of psychology, now we learn about self-care, we learn about taking care of our needs. And it's sometimes a little bit confusing. Like, if I'm taking care of myself, does that mean I'm indulging myself? Does that mean, like, how does this work? I'm not suppressing, and I'm not, in the same time, I'm sitting with my emotions, and I want to take care of them, and I want to ask others, right, set healthy boundaries with other people. So my needs are met. And that sometimes can bring some friction. And in today's episode, I want to talk about this idea of how to deal with our emotions, what our emotional needs, and how sometimes by having expectations from other people to take care of us and our emotional needs can actually get us into more difficulties. And there is a different way. There is a third way, how I like to call it. And I'm going to dive right in with this. And if you don't know me, I'm Dr. Ioana Popa from Team for the Soul. And I really want to continue this journey of how to bring all this wisdom that's been collected through centuries in a way to help us live better lives and not just that to move towards psychological and spiritual growth towards our highest potential in such a way that we can help others and grow together as humanity so with that let's dive in This, I feel like there's this clash currently in the last several decades between many of our practices and many of the ways that we're conditioned how to deal with emotion and also with the psychological and scientific discoveries. One of the things that truly amazes me is that when I'm discovering and seeing scientific and psychological research and discoveries that are helping us on a psychology, not only on a psychological pursuit, but also on a spiritual pursuit, and then see how these are overlapping with the wisdom going way back centuries for me as a Christian till the time of Christ. So one of these discoveries has to do with the sense of true self and how an internal family system is called true self and psychosynthesis as well. The sense of we have a higher self and there's already innate abilities, innate qualities of peace, of compassion, of curiosity, and even courage that are coming from a deeper way, from a quieter place inside, but nonetheless, they're very beautiful and strong. Now, in Christian tradition, we're talking about the image of God that's within us, and or we one could say the fruits of the spirit that we can cultivate throughout our life. How is this helpful? Well, self-care and many psychological methodologies are talking about taking care of our needs and also setting healthy boundaries. And many times what I've seen happening is that we are expecting now our loved ones, it could be our partners or family members, to take care of our needs, which is awesome, especially if you're a child or a teenager. Hey, it's time to do that. It's obviously wonderful to have partner, a partner, a spouse that can really help us and take care of our needs. But what's happening is unless we move forward and learn also how to take care of our own needs from this true self point of view or God's perspective, it's very tricky because we're starting to put in through our healthy boundaries, so to speak, strong demands on our family in certain ways. And Mind you, healthy boundaries are very important. 
And I would not say that stop doing that. I would say, though, there is an extra step to do beforehand, which is learning how to nourish ourselves, help ourselves to be our primary emotional caregiver, which means using our true self to take care of our emotions. And when we do that, and we also use the principle of habituation, which I've talked in the previous episode, we actually become centered. And when we are self-regulated and centered, whatever we negotiate with our loved ones, it's going to go so much better because a peaceful and self-centered person and regulated, self-regulated person is a much pleasant presence. And in that time, we can actually speak for our needs without that edge, you know, that edge that can be demanding or critical, which is not going to go well in with our families or even at workplace. So what am I talking about? Emotions, and this is a, another important law of emotions in emotion, emotional intelligence, is that emotions have many times messages. Now, emotions can be twofold. On one hand, there are internal messages. I might have needs. Or sometimes emotions can be expressed or come from other people. You know, we pick up emotions, and I'm going to talk about that next week. But let's imagine these are our emotions. These are our unmet needs, and we want to express them. It does help tremendously to move on our psychological and spiritual growth to this opportunity to take care of our emotions first. And when we do that, the people around us become secondary caretakers. This is one of expression that I really appreciate from Dr. Dick Schwartz, who's the founder of Internal Family System. He talks about us becoming the primary caretaker. Not to mention, not to say that we're not going to be in relationships and we're not going to express our needs, but when we're actually able to do that first for ourselves, it's so much more pleasant and so much nicer. And actually other people in our family are going to respond to us much, much better. So what am I talking about? What are some of those emotional needs? Well, they need to be seen. They need to be appreciated. They need to be special. The need, the emotional need to love and to be loved, the emotional need to be recognized. Those are natural emotional needs that we have. You know, you call it, as I mentioned, emotional needs, or if you're, so you know, about parts or self personality, like in psychosynthesis, parts, the younger version of ours, our inner children need those. This need a recognition, need to be, feel special, need to be loved and to, to love. And especially if you are in your younger year, years, you know, when you grew up, you didn't get many of these needs met. It's natural to feel them really strong. If you didn't get these needs met early on in your childhood, it's natural to feel them re- really strongly. So with becoming, by becoming primary caregivers, And we are able to, first of all, witness our emotions, which habituate, like I talked last week, we become not not scared anymore of our emotions, then we can really ask our emotions to kind of tone it down, to kind of whisper to us their need. And if you have not tried this, I suggest to try it like, hey, tell me what you need. Or you can ask inside, well, what do I need right now? What is my heart needing? Like, what's my deepest longing right now? And usually there's an answer coming up. And when we do that, if you, it's really helpful to connect. If you're a, a faithful, connect with God and really lean into that and trust that God loves us and invite God to, to notice, to appreciate you, to love you, because that is wonderful when we can feel that. And if you don't believe in God, use it as your higher self and really send compassion. Now, this might not You don't have to feel it in order to send compassion to yourself. You can just send that intention inside. And what happens when we do this often, we are starting to acknowledge and are starting to acknowledge ourselves and seeing ourselves and appreciate ourselves for what we are, not in a bombastic way, but truly as a human being, the way you would acknowledge or see or appreciate your your best friend or someone that you really, truly love in the same way, 
do it yourself. And then when, when we do that, it feels almost like a, my experience is like an inner hug, you know, or, or inner soothing. It's, it's small in intensity, but if we cultivate that on a daily basis, it can grow much stronger. So here's my encouragement for you. And if you're a Christian listening to this, I love this verse from the Bible. Love your God with all your mind, with all your heart and your soul and your body. I'm paraphrasing. And love your neighbor as yourself. This is one key element. One, once we learn to have compassion and love ourselves in a non-indulging way, but like we would love all people, in, we're called to love all 8 billion people in this world, we can then start be, becoming our primary caregivers. And I see you. I know you're really sad right now. Or I know you're really worried, but I see you. I appreciate you for who you are. And with practice, it can become, it opens the door to true gratitude, to feel truly seen. Because if you think about it, from God's perspective, we are really special and unique. And the world needs you with all your gifts, with all your uniqueness. There's no other person like you. And embodying that specialness without pumping ourselves, but just as I said, like all other 8 billion people in this world, we also can give this to ourselves. So with that, I leave you for this week and I wish you a wonderful time regenerating and trying at the end of the day as you experience different emotions to really see yourself as a dear friend and extend some compassion, some love. And if you're a Christian, really got, experience God's love and sending that intention without expectations and keep doing it. Small drops every day with no expectations, but so small, so a step so you cannot really fail. So with that, I say goodbye for now.